All right, we are live on this Tuesday morning. We're live to the KGNS website. We are live to the KGNS app. We're live to the KGNS Facebook page. And we are live to our KGNS YouTube channel. Now, if you've not subscribed to the YouTube channel for KGNS, which is fairly new, I would suggest uh, you check it out because there is a lot of content on the KGNS YouTube channel, and that's in both English and Spanish. Both uh, KGNS and Telemundo are uploading content to uh, the YouTube channel for KGNS, and uh, we're doing lives, we're doing um, stories that are uh, airing on the newscast, we'll put them on YouTube. So, and eventually we'll stop coming to Facebook as well. So you'll, anything you want to watch from, uh, from here, anything digital will be on our YouTube channel. So just a heads up, but thank you so much for being with us. We are going to talk about a project you have heard about uh, from us before and from others. It is the uh, Binational River Conservation Project. We have representatives from RISC here joining us, uh, not just representatives, we have the uh, executive director of RISC, Trisha Cortez. Trisha, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Ruben. So good to be back. I guess I should turn on your mic. Can you say that again <laughs> as enthusiastically as you just did the first time? Uh, no, good morning, <laughs> Ruben. It's, it's so good to be back. Uh, you're also joined by uh, Araceli. She's a resident of El Azteca neighborhood, and we'll, we'll tie that all in in just a little bit. And then we have uh, Martin uh, joining us as well. Martin Castro is the watershed science director for uh, the Rio Grande International Study Center, also known as RISC. So, Martin, good morning. Good to see you again. Mor morning, Ruben. Thank you. So I want to start by catching us up a little bit on this, on this project. We've heard about it for some time, the Binational River Conservation Project. Tell us again how this came about, and then we'll, we'll go from there. All right. Well, this is the project formerly known as the park, wow. like Prince, right? The artist formerly known as Prince. Well, this is uh, the one where we were calling it a binational river park, um, but decided to go with conservation project because some people were thinking that we were just talking about basketball courts mm. or swings and jungle gyms, and we're not. So um, this, Ruben, has been in the works for about a year and a half, um, sort of uh, inspired by Ambassador Ken Salazar. Um, and there's a, a very active binational working group with people from Laredo and Nuevo Laredo uh, to come up with a concept for something that would be spectacular and attractive for Laredo, for residents, and also for visitors. And at the heart of it is restoration of the river but it would do many other beautiful things. It would provide recreational opportunities where people could go outside and enjoy this most beautiful natural resource we have, which is the river. And more importantly, celebrate our binational culture, something that's so unique and maybe we take for granted. So we've been at this for about a year and a half, working really hard on this um, at the local level, at the federal level in DC and in Mexico City. Um, this this is a long-term project um, and where what it would look like right now is a 6.2 mile stretch starting around Jefferson the Jefferson water plant where the Laredo Water Museum and then coming down 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers down um, past Chacon Creek uh, which would be across from Nuevo Laredo's Parque Viveros their zoo and uh, so there's a lot of wonderful uh, neat projects. We're already starting on phase one, which is focused on the El Azteca, Zacate Creek, uh, Las Palmas, Big Island sort of area. That's where a lot of the energies are focusing by uh, different groups. Um, on the Laredo side and Nuevo Laredo side, they're working on sort of their projects. And I, and I want to also just mention, Ruben, I know a lot of people have questions about the river and the, 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 the quality of the river. And Nuevo Laredo has really been investing many millions of dollars to improve their wastewater infrastructure. And they just, sound, they just signed this groundbreaking deal um, with the EPA and, and, and with all these different agencies within Mexico and the U.S., a $71 million um, uh, uh, project that's really going to uh, do a lot to close up um, any of the discharges that were coming into the river from the Nuevo Laredo side. So all of these stars are aligning, um, and it's our moment to take advantage of this to create something 
for our quality of life, something to protect our river, and something that people in Laredo can go to and enjoy and experience and uh, take a lot of pride in. So that's the the bigger picture yeah. of this project. And I know we're here to talk about a specific exciting event. Well, we're here to talk about whatever you want. <laughs> and Martin, of course, we can, we can mix it up a little bit. But let me ask you, why Why um, did, and, and Ken Salazar is the ambassador uh, to Mexico for the U.S. Was this solely his idea? Was it his idea with some other folks? Or why did this come from him? So I think in past years, people, there have been people in Laredo that have, they've had this vision and this dream of how do we create this binational river type of park system along the Rio Grande in Laredo, Nuevo Laredo. I think that's been a dream of some people in Laredo for a long time. And I think it just needed kind of that, that like um, push or encouragement uh, from somebody of that caliber uh, in in our government, our the ambassador to Mexico, he's come up to Nuevo Laredo multiple times. He's very active, very engaged, trying to see how to make things better. And you know, he used to be not just the senator from Colorado, but the Secretary of Interior. And he is a Rio Grande boy. You know, he grew up near the headwaters. Um, his family had a farm and ranch in Colorado near the headwaters of the Rio Grande. So I think this project's a little bit more personal for him in that way of, of wanting to see, at least on the border, um, how we can really take a, a newer look at this river, create the political will to invest in it, and really celebrate who we are um, in this binational, bicultural setting that we live in and take advantage of that. And the funding for this uh, this project, Trisha, where does it come from? From all sorts of places. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it it it's it's a variety. It's not like one pot. It has to be uh, at a government level. You've got to have local government. Um, we're also applying to all sorts of. Um, grants at the federal level that want to do restoration work and um, especially in disadvantaged communities like ours that have been neglected for a long time and underinvested in for a long time um, and then there's also the private sector that is um, starting to get more involved in this so i think it's going to be a variety of local government federal government as well as private sector um, that's all right now working together and really going to uh, um, come together um, as these projects start to to unfold. When, when you mention local government, automatically people are going to say, does that affect my taxes? Is that going to affect uh, my pocketbook in any way, shape or form? Is, will um, that? I, I think, you know, when you look at many other communities, whether it's in Texas, whether it's uh, San Antonio or Corpus or the Valley or El Paso or Dallas, um, and then you look outside of the state of Texas, you know, um, great cities have great parks and they take care of their rivers and this isn't free and it doesn't appear out of nowhere. And so certainly there are, um, all of these communities have had to invest at a local level. What that looks like at this point is, is unclear. We're having tons of meetings um, in terms of, because at a local level, this can get um, local funding can happen through a variety of ways. It's not just like, okay, we're going to raise taxes now, but, but there's a lot of different um, tools and methods in which local funding from the city and the county, the way that works in other parts of Texas um, that invest in these types of major quality of life um, projects of, of how that could happen, Ruben. There's a variety of different yeah. ways. You talked about the stars aligning, and it seems like they really are going to have to because you've got to get two nations together to pull this off. And you're talking about land on both sides. You're talking about a river. I mean, is this a done deal? Is this going to happen? Well, it's already starting to happen. Okay, so, so this is this is a reality now. Yes, phase one is happening. And as you mentioned, Ruben, it is a very ambitious project uh, that would really transform so much. And different things have to happen kind of at the same time and uh, and it's a long-term project this isn't something that's going to be done in one year or three years or five years and and it has to be phased out and right now we're starting with phase one um, and these first projects and then 
you know, the idea is we need to get it to the 6.2 miles. Um, interestingly enough, um, you know, we have a little competition. Um, other border communities are very interested and they see that Laredo is committed to this and working hard in Laredo and Nuevo Laredo. So the Valley, uh, McAllen, Reynosa, Brownsville, Matamoros, and in El Paso, they're also working to do this. So it's up to us to be really organized lay out the plan and go after the funding so that we can get first dibs yeah. on a lot of that uh, funding. Absolutely. Uh, Trisha Cortez is the executive director for the Rio Grande International Study Center. I wanna switch over to Martin Castro here for a little bit. Martin uh, is the watershed science director for RISC. Your role in all of this, Martin. Right, Ruben. So, you know, uh, as Trisha mentioned, this project is at the heart of it lies the restoration of the river. Because I think, you know, we understand, uh, uh, you know, at risk and the other stakeholders involved as well, understand that before, you know, uh, before all the, I don't want to call it glitz and glamour, but before, you know, the, the project itself, you know, the end product, right, before all of that, at the heart of it is the restoration of the river, right? The restoration of the, of the, of the, of our environment here on the Rio Grande in Laredo, Nuevo Laredo. And, and my role in this is to, for example, in one of our phase one projects is working with the uh, local um, ecology of the Las Palmas area, you know, the watershed there, because um, when we say restoration for phase one, we literally mean restoration efforts. So that's boots on the ground, actual restoration work about to take place at Las Palmas, where our organization through a federal earmark that we received through the office of Congressman Henry Cuellar is going to be able to remove invasive species that have, you know, really proliferated at this really unique, um, you know, gem of, a, of, a, of, an, of an area there at Las Palmas and then remove those invasives and then reforest that area, hopefully with native species and restore and bring that area back to back to its grandeur, right, before invasives took over and before um, you know, homeland security uh, devegetated a lot of that um, that area, especially at the Big Island at Las Palmas. I'm not sure you've been, Ruben, but it's no. a it's a wonderful place. I hope to I hope you get to go and see it yourself, uh, because there is so much natural beauty right under you know our noses that should be preserved, and that is sort of the first step in this whole project when we talk about phase one. So that's my role as the as the watershed science director. You know, we'll hope uh, I'll get to oversee this project. And, and 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 you know and and more to come right not just on the restoration efforts uh but all tying it all together to the other projects that are also taking place right around the same area at las palmas can you talk about define a watershed i don't I, i've got to be honest i don't even know what that means right so a watershed is simply an area of land uh that is defined by either several water courses like river streams or creeks and there's certain boundaries that sort of delineate that that area of land um uh, and that can be sort of a main stem. For example, the Rio Grande Basin watershed itself is one of the largest river basins in the United States. And in Mexico, it's an international, it's a transnational uh, watershed basin. So um, you have the Rio Grande, of course, as the main stem, the main channel, of the river itself, uh, the fourth longest river in North America. And so ev the watershed itself encompasses all of the uh, creeks, streams, tributaries that make up that uh, the flows to that particular basin, so that catchment area that catches all of the rainfall and that they converge or empty into, the lar into a larger water body, in this case, the Rio Grande. So our local watershed here, you know, is, is part of the much larger Rio Grande basin. So, uh, but, you know, the work we do here will affect um, the other parts, you know, as, 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 I, as I mentioned, you know, of the watershed you know, doing this restoration work, removing these invasives, that's going to improve so many things, right? We're going to see improvements in our water quality uh, and our water quantity as well. A lot of these invasives, like the salt cedar trees, for example, consume hundreds of gallons of water per day. So we'll see a reduction in, in consumption from invasives and, um, and hopefully bring back natives as well. So that's going to have benefits to the local ecology, not only with wildlife, but with, uh, you know, humans as well. You know, of course, residents that can enjoy these improved um, ecological areas for quality of life improvements. We talk a lot about that too as well, that being in nature, not only is it um, uh, immersed in it, it can bring a lot of health benefits as well. Can you um, kind of give me an idea, either you, Martin, or you, Trisha, 
What has been the response, uh, both at the local level, at all levels really, um, to this project? I'll add and then you can, yeah. Martin. Um, I think there's been a lot of enthusiasm about this, about how it could transform Laredo. I think there's been a lot of questions um, about how this would work, how we would make it happen. Um, but, you know, the, the city and the county have um, express their their interest and their support in it especially as we're going after these bigger grants that require matches um, at the local level um, so and generally people in the community see this as you know everybody says oh there's nothing to do in Laredo and I mean can you imagine we have something so stunning where you can go walk or take your family or take your dog or go biking or go to concerts or go to things that are going to start appearing along this area um, for our area I, I think that's fabulous I am um, as for those who have expressed concerns, I think a lot of it has to do with them not understanding the fuller picture of what this is, or they think maybe, as you mentioned, Ruben, like, oh, my taxes are just going to automatically go up and I have to pay for all of this by myself. And I think there's kind of mis um, uh, misunderstandings or uh, a need to to um, better inform and explain what a lot of this is, which is what this event that's happening this Saturday is going to try to do um, in a very targeted way with the five neighborhoods that uh, hug that would that hug the river bank and, and would be a part of this. But um, it's been overwhelmingly, I would say, very positive. And outside of Laredo, Ruben, you go to D.C. and they all ask about this project. Uh, I know in the these other places I was telling you on the border, they're all wanting to do this same type of thing for their binational communities. So there is a lot of um, awareness about this project outside of Laredo, which is really interesting and, and um, a, a lot of enthusiasm to see how we can make that work uh, as well. Well, it's a never before seen project. And so that's difficult to describe because it's never been seen before, but uh, there's already renderings of this, right? Yes, we need to share those with you. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna share those with you, Ruben, so you can um, have it on the show and people can see these slides. Um, that, as you mentioned, it's just like sort of this vision concept and these renderings yeah. that were created uh, with, with meetings with Nuevo Laredo and Laredo people. So there is already a concept. I mean, there's something on paper that can obviously change as time goes on, but there's a vision there already then. Yes, it's not a master plan, right. like with all the nitty nitty gritty details at this moment just yet, but yes, yes. Uh, talk to me about, you You have a resident, Araceli's from El Azteca neighborhood. What is the benefit to the neighborhoods? And, and we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll show the flyer for this project here in a bit, but what's the benefit to the neighborhoods? Um, and then I'm going to turn it over yeah. to Araceli. Está preguntando Araceli, mm -hmm. ¿en sí. cuál sería el beneficio para hacer uh, proyectos así de restauración uh, ecológico y recreativos? Uh, no solamente para el Azteca, sino para más vecindarios a la orilla del río. ¿Cuál piensa usted que son los beneficios? ¿Qué opina usted de algo así? Um, esta es mm -hmm. lo que okay. está este, Pues buenos días. Eh, soy residente del, del Azteca y pues estamos muy, muy contentos de este proyecto. Y, y este bueno pues los beneficios que encontramos este principalmente pues el cuidado del medio ambiente eh, eh, pues tenemos ahí pues el río grande y, y este las áreas verdes entonces pues como el cuidado del medio ambiente y también a su vez para nosotros pues se abre la oportunidad de, de tener más espacios este para recreativos ajá, para poder salir este y explorar y caminar y pues eso nos ayuda a nuestra salud y pues también nos abre la oportunidad de, de nueva, ahora sí, bueno, perdón, nuevas oportunidades, digamos, este, pues tanto de aprendizaje y este, ahí en el barrio también. Entonces, como que sí estamos muy contentos de, de que tomen nuestra voz, de que participemos y parece que sí hay muchos beneficios. <risa> 
es, hace falta en esa área, uh, Araceli, ¿usted cree que, que se necesita más cosas como esto en, en esa área entonces? En esa, eh, en sí, este. la verdad yo creo que sí, porque ahorita este, pues el lugar, digamos, en sí, pues es bonito, ¿verdad? Porque es natural, pero como que a su vez da un aspecto un poco triste, digamos, este, ahorita como se encuentra, este, pues no dan muchas ganas o ánimos de salir, porque no cuenta como con accesos bien para entrar, digamos, o caminar, o entonces como que le hace falta un poco más ahí, este, eh, como de reforestación o, o este, o este proyecto, ¿verdad? Para poner un poquito más bonito, aunque ya está, pero aún más, ¿no? Y accesible para las personas y que lo podamos usar. Ajá. ¿Y usted cree que eh, este va, va, le va a dar ánimo a, a los residentes de, de la Azteca, entonces? Eh, sí, yo considero que sí, porque ahorita pues se ve un poco el ambiente un poco como decaído, como que no está muy bonito, como que... Y entonces esto como que va a generar otra mirada, ¿verdad? Y nosotros ahí adentro, pues otro ánimo de estar en este lugar. Entonces, pues se me hace un proyecto bien interesante y, este, y además que pensemos en el cuidado del medio ambiente. ¿Y usted ha hablado con los otros, con sus vecinos y ellos entienden lo que está pasando y todo eso? Eh, sí, sí, para esto estamos eh, reuniéndonos, haciendo reuniones y estamos como que todos en esa voz, ¿no? Escuchando, este, participando eh, en esto y qué nos gustaría ver y cómo, este, más o menos. O sea. I was just going to mention, Ruben, one of the interesting um, things about this is we've taken a very unique approach in that we really, really want to involve residents mm -hmm. and community members. So we've been meeting for the last three months with m many meetings with residents of El Azteca to get their input on what they're, they feel they're lacking or missing and what is it that they would like to see. And if there is a restoration project, what is it that they'd like to see? And Interesting, you know, Lee, uh, some had never been down there because like Araceli said, the access is not very easy for some people and they don't know how to get down into these areas like the Las Palmas Nature Trail or Sacate Creek and the beautiful waterfall. And so we've been doing field trips for them so they can see for themselves and feel and smell and hear what it's like. Um, and so we're, we, really like how this is shaping up. So now we want to apply it to the other four neighborhoods that are in this area that Martin can talk about, which is a cool thing happening this uh, this weekend. So the neighborhoods that would be uh, affected would be La Ladriera, El Tonto, El Rincón del Diablo, and uh, Chacón, of course, El Azteca, Martin. So let's go ahead and transition to this event. So this is a community design workshop for the Binational River Conservation Project. I'm gonna show the flyer as you tell us what this is going to be. Sure, and if I can, Ruben, if I may tell the story behind how this sort of came to be for for this event. Um, it's a great story. So uh, back in March, the UTSA School of Architecture, one of the professors that teaches uh, graduate design courses at the school, who also happens to work for Overland, the same uh, architecture design firm that designed those renderings that you and I have now seen, he said, um, I'm teaching a graduate uh, studio this semester, design studio. He said, uh, I, I've picked a project for my students to design their own architectural projects. The project I pick is this project, the Binational wow. River Conservation Project. And so he's like, I want to, uh, we're coming down to Laredo in early March. Uh, we want to go meet and greet the stakeholders that work behind the scenes, that have been working behind the scenes on this project uh, over a weekend. And we want to go see the sites themselves. So we brought the students down. It was about 15 or 16 graduate students, uh, the two professors um, that came down to Laredo. We had a wonderful meet and greet with them over a weekend with, I mean, stakeholders from Laredo and Nova Laredo ourselves, stakeholders from field the city. Trips. Yeah, and we did field trips also. They got to do field trips. They even ca kayaking on the river. They even got to <laughs> kayak. These students, many of whom had never been to Laredo, probably all of them, uh, all these graduate students kayaked on the river with with uh, Dr. Vaughn and, and uh, Dr. Drubio, um, and they got to see pretty much all of these same uh, neighborhoods and these sites on the U.S. side. Unfortunately, they couldn't cross to the to the Mexico side. The school couldn't give them permission, but that was just fine. Um, and so they they were so impressed, Ruben, with uh, the the project itself, the area Laredo, Nuevo Laredo, 
um, uh, the neighborhoods and all the stakeholders that they got to meet. They were so impressed that the professor, the same professor, called us back in, um, I think, uh, June and said, hey, UTSA School of Architecture approved a second trip back to wow. Laredo to to now showcase, the students want to showcase the projects that they designed in these very same neighborhoods to the community. He said, uh, what do you all think? And we said, this is the perfect moment to yeah. to do a charrette workshop so that so that we can garner that input and showcase these student projects and i and it was you know and that's something ruben that's very meaningful because as i've said before you know the the utsa school of architecture they could have picked any project you know in texas even some in san antonio themselves they could have gone to dallas or houston or what have you but they chose laredo because of what the, because of the impressions uh you know that they that they had and 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 what they what they what they what they saw themselves back in march and and so they they decided to come back now for round two and what's even more interesting ruben if i may really quick is the professor told us that you know utsa has not approved a uh out uh out of city field trip in over 10 years he said this is the second time that they've approved a trip like this in over 10 years so that's that's quite a testament to the um, value and interest that uh, the UTSA School of Architecture and um, others have in this project itself. So, you know, we're we're very happy to have them back here this weekend for 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 this very collaborative effort, not only with UTSA but our friends over at Able City as well. Now it's happening on a Saturday morning, nine to one, at the Laredo Center for the Arts, uh, second floor mezzanine. And what can folks? Um, expect at, at this community design workshop. Then also, if you can verify, is this the vision of the of the binational park? And yes. Look at that screen over here. Just oh, oh, you're not on camera right now, so you can if you can just turn get it. up and if you oh. can just get up and check it out. Actually, oh, okay. Good. Sorry, bro. I was kind of lost. And I'm showing the flyer right now, so you're good. Gotcha. Uh, so that people can. Is it this? Yeah, one? that'd be the. That's one of the vision concepts. Okay. So itself. this is just kind of like an idea. Yeah. Of what it could look like. That's this posted by the Laredo Chamber of Commerce. Right. Right. That's uh, that's one of the vision. Uh, vision uh, the designs that there's sure. there exist several right but that's one of the sort of the main ones um, but your question Ruben if you, you can help me refresh my memory yeah, um, what, what can people expect if they if they want to go to the right so the, so they're gonna expect um, so for for starters you know we're, we at risk will be there <clears throat> along with the UTSA School of Architecture they're gonna there's gonna be about 15 graduate students along with several of the uh, professors and I think even the director of the school itself and our colleagues from Able City, but they can expect sort of these. Um, we're setting it up to have mo a very ha hands-on activities with the students from UTSA themselves that are going to lead this uh, the programming for Saturday. So they're going to, you know, they're going to expect some tabletop exercises. They're going to have some like, like right by neighborhood. Yeah, so by neighborhood, <coughs> Ruben, we have about ten tables. So we'll probably expect about uh, two tables uh, uh, per neighborhood, and there's going to be bit map blow-ups. There'll be some, uh, you know, question and answering. And like Trisha said, it'll get down to the nitty gritty, right? You know, and it may, you know, like what, what you, what do you, for example, as a resident of El Azteca or El Toto, any of these other neighborhoods, what do you expect? What would you like to see in your backyard, in your neighborhood? So there'll be some drawings. I'm sure there'll be some, uh, you know, some some commentary there, Ruben. So it's it's a very hands on process. I, Trisha and I have personally done. Uh, several of these so you know it's it, it gets down to the nitty-gritty like you know Ruben if you lived uh, here you know and if you had a park in your backyard what would you like to see would you like to see swing sets so it's it's stuff like that it, it, you know it, and it's dynamic it's a, it's sort of a, a very dynamic thing and and so that's sort of the input that's sort of the, um, the some of the expectations that residents can have uh, if they decide to show up and of course we're also going to be offering you know uh, free food and light refreshments and even raffling some gift cards to thank uh, those residents that do participate for their time in, in this very valuable input that we're seeking. Now, do you need to just show up or do you have to register? No, no, it's free and open to the public. Okay. Uh, anyone can join us, but specifically we want to target these uh, five neighborhoods, Ruben, because they stand to be, as Trisha <laughs> mentioned, the most impacted for, from this project. Can you go even if you're not in one of these neighborhoods? We welcome anyone who can who wants to show up. Just to I go mean, see we, the process. Yeah, to see the process itself, right? And um, you know, the, these these uh, design workshops are 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 not. Uh, you know, I like to say, Ruben, or we we like to say, you know, they're many times they're quite uncommon. I think because you know, many times, not just in Laredo, but in other cities. 
you know, projects get built by, you know, local governments. And, uh, and uh, a lot of times it's built first, right? And then tell the public about it later. As <coughs> Richard said, we're really trying to work and seize the moment now with this real community engagement that we have and success that we've had in La Azteca to get that uh, input first before projects move into design and construction. Now, the, I've got a number there that was on the flyer for Carla. If anybody has information, they can call Carla. Mm -hmm. Who's yes. Carla? <laughs> yes. Yeah, from our staff. Carla, okay, yes. Just a second. <laughs> One of our staffers, right. Here's the phone number. If anybody has any questions, they can call Carla. Uh, any final thoughts, Tricia? I just think this is, uh, it's like time. It's time for Laredo to do this. You know, we're a proud community. 1755, we were established a really old community and one of the very the very first resolution that uh the the governmental body established back then in the mid 1700s was about the river and was about protecting the river and so um this is the most important precious part of our community and landscape and this is a very real way to invest in protecting it and gathering input from people about how they would like to see that landscape, what kinds of things they would like to make it accessible, to enjoy it, to go down there, have fun, neat things to do from an economic, recreational, ecological, social standpoint. Uh, we we want to do this. We want to make something really, really nice for our community. Martin, final thoughts? Uh, well, no, just echoing what Trisha said, you know, this is a uh, their moment for res the, the moment for residents and others to to give the input, right? Um, uh, again, it just doesn't normally it doesn't happen this way, right? And so it is it is uh, a monumentous a monument uh, monumental excuse me um, uh, opportunity to to take part in this and have that uh, and feel and have residents feel like they are um, you know participating. Yeah, and part of this process and feel like they're participating in something we think is worthy of showcasing for our community. And if I can add, Ruben, just one last thing. The night before uh, at the Center for the Arts, the students from UTSA are actually going to exhibit for Caminarte their final projects that they designed uh, that evening from 6 to 9. Friday, so, on Friday. Yeah, Friday evening, right. So they, you know, that one is also open to the public. Um, so we invite others to come see the projects themselves. Those students will be there to, you know, for meet and greets if, they, if people would like to go see their projects. So that's happening the night before. And then, of course, the main event, Saturday, September 2nd, from 9 to 1 at the Center for the Arts. Will Araceli be there? Uh, yes, Araceli, si usted va a ir el, el sábado. Ah, el sábado. Sí, 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 <laughs> claro. Sí, estamos muy animados y, y muy contentos de que nos inviten y de que, pues, eh, tomen nuestra... Nuestra voz, digamos, nos escuchen, ¿verdad? Entonces estamos para ir a aprender y también para, pues, dar nuestra, nuestra voz. And Ruben, last thing. So, I mean, this really is a binational thing, right? Like, it's, it's, um, we have to emphasize that over and over. So, today, we have a meeting in Nuevo Laredo to see about, they're interested in doing their own charrette, their own design workshop with their architects, their urban planners, their faculty members that teach architecture, their advanced architecture students, um, to see how this would um, look and play out for Nuevo Laredo. So it's kind of just exciting that our communities can do this and be developing these really close relationships um, on something of this magnitude, Ruben. Well, keep us posted. Trisha Cortez, Executive Director for Risk, Martin Castro, Watershed. I always forget your title, Martin. <laughs> Watershed, don't tell me, don't tell me. Watershed Science Director for go. Risk. And Araceli, she's a, a resident from El Azteca. Uh, gracias, Araceli. Sí, no, de nada. Uh, God bless you, Trisha, Martin. God Thank you, Ruben. Ruben. See you this weekend, Ruben. God willing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what's happening with Telemundo. They have uh, Entu Casa coming up. Turn and look at the clock in about nine minutes. So I will see you on KJNS News at noon. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed rest of your day. Mm -hmm.